But what kind of feelings do you guys get when you watch a Wimbledon final these days? Well, I have to um, commentate on it. So I have to put my personal feelings aside and just hopefully do a good job. And for you? Uh, well, I'm a little bit further away from the tennis, so uh, for me it's probably easier to deal with. Well, you can say you play more tennis than watch it, and you watch more than play it. Yes. yes. Yeah. And when you look back on the, the rivalry you had, especially going back to the three consecutive uh, Wimbledon finals, late 80s? So far it was a good interview, now it gets a bit... <laughs> No, it's always good to see him. You know, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. he good. was my, my toughest rival for many years. Um, you know, we played, I don't know, 50 times. We played, we played a lot of times. A lot of times. Yeah, and, of and time. you know, winning and losing. But obviously, those three consecutive Wimbledon finals uh, is something we were both remembered for. But when, when, when you think of uh, Boris, What's the first that comes to mind? Be careful. Uh, careful. Be careful, Boris. No, like, like I said, uh, I think Boris has been uh, really important to my tennis. And, uh, you know, he's been uh, a big challenge out there. Uh, something that sort of drove me forward. Uh, it was a guy that I wanted to beat at okay, the time, good. there's no question. Good. And I'm sure he wanted to beat me as well. Exactly. But uh, I guess for you, Boris, I mean, during your whole career, you've been surrounded by Swedes. I mean, literally surrounded by yeah. Swedes, and you're probably influenced by Borg as well. So, I mean, there's been a lot of Swedes and uh, Sweden going on in your head. For well, your a lot. Um, you, you mentioned that uh, Bjorn Borg was my inspiration growing up. That's the reason I really picked up the tennis racket. And then when I first came on the scene as a junior, this gentleman was impossible to beat in the juniors, uh, winning. He won all the uh, slams, slams in the juniors. Yeah, one year, yeah. So and I was always then, you know, losing earlier. And uh, in one of our matches early on, you beat me in the juniors in Wimbledon in the first round. Um, I remember the year 1983. Right? 1983. So from that moment on, I felt that in, in order to overcome and become the best possible player, I have to beat uh, Edberg, I have to beat Vilanda, I have to beat so many from this country that uh, we started this relationship with you know, Becker and the Swedes. Yeah. And, uh, and it's uh, still strong today, I, I consider him a friend. Talking about uh, you two guys, I mean, you played each other 35 times. Yeah. Yeah. 35 times. 35, okay. and you yeah. have 25, 10. Yes. But going to the slams, it's three, four, Edberg. I'd rather would have changed it, huh? Yeah. I think more of the other victories. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's possible. Yeah, we only played actually four times in Grand Slams, which is quite astonishing if you think back. Only four times? We only played four times. Three finals in uh, Wimbledon, no. one yeah. semis. Uh, in in Indiana, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Yes, and that's, uh, you know, having a career of 10, 15 years, um, it's quite amazing because if you look nowadays, uh, you know, Nadal, Djokovic, Federer, Mario, they keep playing each other at every Grand Slam. It's, it's sort of very seldom that they don't play each other. Uh, so things have really changed uh, in today's tennis because when, uh, during my era together with Boris, there were uh, f more upsets, there were a lot more names, there were anything yeah. from McEnroe, Connors and Sampras, I guess he came along and, uh, and a lot of other players. So it was uh, not as predictable as tennis is today. Uh, because you get a question, who's going to win the next right. Grand Slam? And you only have four names, basically. Right. So, uh, you know, the reason, the reason, you know, here yeah, you have six slams also. Yeah, six slams. Yeah, I have six slams. In those days, to win a slam was unbelievable, or even two. Uh, um, you know, Federer won his 17th Grand Slam on Sunday. Think about it, 17. Uh, Nadal already has 11. Djokovic already has five. And it's just... Just a different era, just a different time. Finally, I was just uh, thinking about the tennis of Germany and the tennis of Sweden. It's, uh, I mean, looking back on what each country had 10 years ago or five years ago and for us yeah. just a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, what do you say about it? Well, so why I, is it like I, that? I thought the German for tennis was bad. I'd have heard about the best <laughs> Swedish player. Yeah. Ranked number 340? Yeah, that's uh, Reader's Note, yeah. What is this? It can be, it can get better. Well, it has to, <laughs> it has to, with a country with such great tennis history, you know, some of the best players of all time come from Sweden. And when I've heard it from Vilanda last week, actually, 
I, I thought it was a joke. I thought, this is he's joking me. I'm sure you have a couple in the top 100. He said, no, our best player is 340. Obviously, Robin Soderling being out of action for a year, that hurts. But then there's, a, there's room in the middle between 5 and 340. Perfect. Have a good time in Boston. Good. Thank you. Tack. Tack så mycket. Kan du mycket svenska? No, no, not really.